Welcome to Tea with Willie D. Welcome to Tea with Willie D. Welcome to Tea with Willie D. A low-key, stress-free oh. <laughs> vibe where well, we here to nothing more than spread love and some dope-ass energy. A low-key, stress-free vibe where well, we are here to do nothing more than spread love and some dope-ass energy. I am Willie D. CEO of Loving You Productions and talk show host of the Facebook Live show Thanking You. This very here show, Tea with Willie D. I've decided to own my power and step out into the world on this exciting new journey as my own boss. I'm making it my mission to remind the world that human connection is real and there is power in conversation. These teas are changing the game for me because I'm realizing we are all going through the same things. No matter what occupation, race, or gender you are, we, as the human species, are all connected. And whether you like it or not, there is no elevating as a people until we realize that. I am so excited about today's interview. Today's guest is one of Broadway's VIP performers. And this is a full circle moment as we both grew up in Dallas, Texas, performing around each other. My first memory of Jay Armstrong Johnson was being nominated next to him at the Betty Buckley Awards. We were both star thespians at our own high schools, and we were being honored for our work. Spoiler alert, Jay won everything, like everything. But watching him perform on that stage, I knew that there was no doubt in my mind he was going to be a star. And now he has worked in all markets of entertainment. And he is here between shows of Phantom of the Opera on Broadway to share some of his wisdom and inspiring life moments with me. So, welcome to the Loving You Lounge, J.A. Johnson! <laughs> welcome! Thank you for having oh me! Oh my god, thank you for coming. <laughs> this lighting is fierce. Bitch, that's like. This is Jay Armstrong Johnson. What's up? Um, not just up to the world. I'm Jay Armstrong Johnson, artist. You artist. know, I'm trying to dabble in some writing these days. Mostly. Are you really? Yeah. Music, you know, music, theater. music plays. I mean, I'm, I'm really just trying to like take my downtime and like use it creatively as opposed to just like being on Instagram all day long. No, or, like, that's, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so I feel like we're all going through this like phase yeah. of life is becoming normal to be on your phone yeah. more than this like live life. It's like a drug. What do you do in your free time right now? I mean, um, right now I'm trying to read a lot. Mm -hmm. That was my New Year's resolution, is to like read a damn book. I Still just finished The Four Agreements, which is like kind of like a self-help book about like how to like retrain your brain on like uh, everything, yeah. you know? Just like how to use your words, um, you know, how to get rid of negative energy, you know? I'm trying Do you have to... a lot of negative energy in your life? Um, sometimes... Do I need to fight somebody for you, I Jay? Mean, no, not really, but you know, it's, it's, New York City is hard. And, you know, you, regardless of where you are, um, you know, you're. I'm always trying to, you know, my Virgo no. self is trying to just, like, just make, Virgo. <laughs> make things <laughs> better. Today's theme also is work. Where did performing start for you? It was church that really kind of, like, ushered me into theater because my friends at church, who I sang in the choir with and were in the youth group with, they were part of this theater group called Kids Who Care, mm -hmm. where I, like, did my first musical, and so that's kind of how... At age like twelve, I like got introduced to the world of theater, and it kind of like rocked my world. And what high school did you go to? I went to. I ended up graduating from FWAFA, Fort Worth okay. Academy of Fine Arts. Okay, I was like, I remember so FWAFA Nators. <laughs> it was a Fine Arts Academy because y'all were killing it. It was a crazy year. We also, I mean, you know, Ahmad Simmons was there at that time, and Tiffany Mann was there at that time, and you know, it was like really like what was in the <laughs> water we don't even yeah. know. And why didn't you share? Yeah, you were right there. Well, you were right. You I'm were sipping that same water. Just, I, didn't, I just didn't get a big enough sip, you know? I, like, I was trying not to be greedy and... <laughs> I was chugging, honey. <laughs> that was I kind of got lucky in high school that I was working professionally. I was doing, like, one professional show per, like, year, it mm -hmm. seemed, ever since I was, like, 13. So I had that, like, taste... Yeah. of what it was to, like, get paid. Yes. You know what I mean? no, so, like, yes. It's one thing to do, like, yes. high school shows and be like, this is awesome, I'm, like, flexing yes. artistic muscles, but it's another thing to be a 13-year-old and be handed a paycheck, a check. and you're like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, Mom. So, <laughs> I came to New lesson. York to be like, I have this resume that I didn't realize I was building with, like, these actors no, no, yeah, from New York like, and these directors from New York and theaters. so I was able to walk into those audition rooms while going to college and have a little leg up just because of my few regional gigs that I had. Right, right. So then, okay, you get to New York, what's your first Broadway show? 
Um, You've done so many, I just can't remember. Uh, I left school to go on tour with a chorus line, and then <laughs> the, like, the week or two I got back from tour is when I had my audition for Hair. Was that the first? It was my first Broadway show. Yeah. They had actually... You took my life, Jay. Girl, girl, I don't even know how it no, happened. I know, but that's, that's literally because I looked like Jonathan Groff at age 21. I'm not even kidding. Like, no, that's yeah. how but, I got She's cast. talented, too, okay? <laughs> she had the look, but she got the gift. But they had actually called me in to audition for the understudy for Claude while I was on tour, okay. and I couldn't because I was on the road, and they hadn't found it by the time I got back from tour, so I auditioned. they asked me to come in again. So it was like serendipitous. Yeah. It, was, it was a really freaking cool year. So where has Broadway led now? How many shows have you done? This uh, Phantom is my fifth Broadway fifth show. Fifth Broadway show. Yeah. Original Broadway cast? Um, four original casts, and then Phantom is my first replacement gig. What are all your shows? Just um, So it was first Hair, and then I did, I stood by for Aaron Tveit and Catch Me If You Can, um, which was fun. And then after that, I uh, did Hands on a Hard Body for like yes. three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she closed real quick. She closed so fast. So fast. What was that like? It was, well, it was actually like, devastating. Because that's the thing is you've seen such highs and lows. Yeah. Well, and like Hands on a Hard Body was about Texas. Yeah. Like, so like it was like my heart. It was my soul. I felt like I was just kind of breathing on stage, not really acting. Yeah, no. I like knew these people. I like knew the setting. Like it... It takes place like an hour and a half where we, from where we grew up. You know what I mean? Yeah, long yeah, view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when we closed, <laughs> come after, on, long view. Come on, long view. Yeah. So after we closed, what for in like two months, it was like earth shattering for me. Um, it really, it really shook me. Um, but thank God it happened because my very first audition after that was on the town at Barrington Stage Company, which then turned into Broadway. Which like what? Okay. Okay. Which was like my first leading role on, on Broadway, Broadway in a huge in theater. Huge I'm sorry, theater. I'm the friend that gags. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, you're such a nerd. But no, like, in a, I, just to see you standing on that stage and oh. taking that bow, what's that like? I was gagging myself. I mean, I was also being able to sing, act, and dance, the three things that I'd like trained to do yes. my whole life, you know? As we work and as we get credits and move, you move up in the ladder in the Broadway community. Yeah. More people see your work. But you're also, you gotta be on every show. Because right. you never know who's in the audience. You never sure. you're like, what is that pressure like? What is What do you do to take care of yourself? Well, when I was doing On the Town, it was my first time leading a show, number one. Uh, it was my first time like, really kind of doing that kind of rigorous of a physical show. Yeah. Not only because of the dancing, but because of the pratfalls and like the physical comedy that mm -hmm. my yeah. role did. So for the first time in my life, I was getting like debilitating stage fright. Which was like never a part of like... My ministry, yeah. <laughs> like growing up. Come on, yes. So, Save souls um, in the house. <laughs> so Megan Fairchild, who played our Ivy Smith and is also mm -hmm. New York City Ballet, like principal ballerina, she um, introduced me to transcendental meditation. And so I like really started doing like meditation and like yoga practices to really calm my mind and like get center. And mm -hmm. so that has kind of been a bit of a life changing uh, situation as well. It's just med meditation. Which yeah. I always thought was just like hippy dippy weird stuff, even yeah. though I was in hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like that was kind of that's kind of been um, my remedy for stage fright um, and for anxiety is um, meditation. Right. Do you, when it comes to like rehearsals and understudy, well, you don't you understand it right now. Um, but like put-ins and interviews and other things, like do you take a good amount of time to yourself? I try to, and then I also try to like not think too hard about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like let your 15 years in this industry speak for itself like take a deep breath like years. breathe it in like be yourself like you're okay you can be gay you're okay you know what i mean it's it, like but that's i don't know, think like people those... realize when you grow up in texas like you don't have you can perform and you can be but you still have to man up boy put some bass in your sure. voice so you know what i mean like exactly. it's not until you move to a city where new york where you're like oh i don't even know where the straight people go right exactly. <laughs> to hang out anymore well, and i had like representation at the early part of my career where i was in hair yeah. and then catch me if you can that was like try to not do the gay thing like don't go to your boyfriend's stage door like you know like weird really? now so all of a sudden like i was here in New York and like really gay and out and loud and loving it because of hair. I mean, we marched on Washington yeah. for gay rights. Yeah, yeah. As like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we were like literally marching, like marching on Washington to get the rights. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was being reeled in by these business people telling me to like, hush the gay, like yeah. don't be so out and proud. And so I kind of, you know. Is it because are they like prepping you to be, is that the leading guess, man? Yeah. 
So, you know, and I, I do, I'm i sure that there are some people in this industry that still don't want to cast a gay dude in a straight role, you know, because of this, that, and the other, and the Instagram followers, and you need to, uh, but I've played straight roles my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've known how to we do it. I've dated a few women, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, never I mean, have I ever. I'm pretty, I'm pretty gay, but like, yeah. you know, on the Kinsey scale, I'm like, <laughs> not quite a six, I'm like a four and a half, five. You know? Okay, I'm like a nine. <laughs> Nine and a half, whatever. <laughs> okay. We all got different journeys, Queen. I'm pretty gay. Um, <laughs> I'm just grateful that you are here. My boyfriend's like, he's gay. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> you're, so Pit and Peak, it's like my favorite game to play. It's your Pit and your Peak of like a trip. Like what was the worst thing you've gone through and then what was like the best part of it? Like we all have a dream about it. We all are like, I want to be on Broadway and I want to do this. I want to do this. And like, you've been at the Tony Awards. You've been at these major things. You've mm -hmm. been in the room with... Legends. Yeah, sure. So what are the parts of Broadway that you thought were going to be amazing that maybe weren't as fun or as easy as you thought? You mentioned the Tony Awards, and that's literally one of them. Because when you sit in front of the television as a kid, watching the Tonys, it's this, like, magical, mystical, like, thing. And then on the actual day of the Tony Awards, if you're performing that day, it's a work day for you. You don't get to get in a tuxedo. You don't get to sit in the house and watch. You have to show up to your theater, get into costume, get bussed over to Radio City, get off your bus, do your performance, get back on your bus, go back to your theater, then get into your tuxedo to go to whatever after party that your show may or may not be throwing that night. You're kidding. No, so so that's why I was like, oh, well, at least they're paying me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like, at first I thought I was like, Can if, I'm in a new, if I'm in a new Broadway show, I'll be sitting in the audience and, yeah. like, and the cameras will be everywhere. And I was like, no, if you're not nominated, then yeah. you got to work. It's a work day for you. It's a commercial for your show. Also done eight shows that week. A lot of people did yeah. a matinee that totally. day. And like, <laughs> and up yeah. leading up to the tour, there's all this you're pressure. And pressure. Like, they, oh, yeah. You have to be exhausted. Yeah, and I they're see. also rehearsing Broadway Bears, <laughs> which right? is the very next weekend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like, true. Oh, we'll be trying it. Yeah, yeah, man. It's a fun life. Yeah. Well, then what are like the, the peaks of Broadway? Um, I guess one of my peaks would have been it wasn't necessarily broadway but because of my work in the theater i was able to um do sweeney todd at the new york philharmonic with audra mcdonald and with emma thompson and with bryn turfel and you know like crazy crazy legends and it was with a 55 piece orchestra and it was filmed for pbs and it was a sondheim musical and sondheim was there giving us notes and you know it's like, and now you wonder why i say the vip <laughs> Broadway. I mean, like, I'm getting chills I am, about it. I literally can't breathe. But yeah, that was truly a peak for me because it felt like everything I'd ever wanted as a kid was like coming to fruition before me. What was it like to be in the room with people you see as legends like that to have them respect your work and have them <laughs> listen to your moments and take your voice? It was it was pretty it was pretty damn cool, especially since these legends were also brilliant human beings. Yeah. They were like sweet and smart and attentive and you know like Audra was very lovely and also uber uber focused and Emma Thompson came in and like heard my British accent and she was like <laughs> <laughs> and like on 10 minute breaks she would give me like a little bit of a dialect coaching no, to but, make but, sure that like I didn't sound like this posh British guy she was like you're a, she, she literally what did she say she was like you're a you're not the British Queen, you're a bloody sailor. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, to have someone care about the work, yes, you know, and, yes, yes. you know, work with you, even though she's leading the damn show, you know, that, that was, that was probably the coolest part, is to know that you're, some of your heroes that are out there yeah. are actually lovely humans. And, and rooting for well, you. Yeah, and rooting for you, and wanting the piece to succeed. Yeah. Well, let's move for a few minutes into the on-camera oh, world of yours. Right. How, um... <laughs> where did we start? How about Quantico? Quantico came about um, because of my work on Broadway. Um, Josh Safran, who uh, was the showrunner of Gossip Girl, mm -hmm. Smash, and Quantico, and has another one out in L.A. He has a couple more out in L.A. right now. Um, he's a big theater fan. He's a big musical yeah. theater fan. So um, when my agent submitted me for a specific role on Quantico, he knew of me because mm -hmm. of the work that I had done. So I went in and I auditioned and I didn't get the role. 
No. But then three months later, they wrote a different role onto the show, and he remembered me from my first audition, so he called me back in for that role, and that's the role that I got. So it really does matter being ready. Yeah, like, and if you don't times. get a job, just do good work, because that the good work in the room might not be the job, but it might be the next job. Nope. Yeah. So what were those days like on set? How like they were so fun. I mean, it was my first. I mean, I was like, you know, everyone wants to be on a television show. Yes. Like once you've done like the Broadway thing, it's like next. TV. Yeah, I was like, you know next what I mean? TV. Um, and it really was amazing. We were we shot in Montreal, um, the first season, Love and it was Montreal. oh, it was so beautiful. And it was in the dead of winter, so it was like negative nineteen. Oh, it was cold <laughs> it was So cold. But I was living my dreams. I mean, like. I was playing a really cool character. I mean, the character that I played on Quantico is on the spectrum of autism. He's like a computer genius hacker, like things that I am not. I mean, I might be on the little spectrum for a little bit. <laughs> but, like, it, you know, yeah. it wasn't just like be pretty and like fall in love with someone on, like yeah. you see in a lot of these shows. Yes. I was able to like play a very specific character, which was. It was shady it was sometimes. Dream come true. Yeah, I was shady sometimes. <laughs> well, shady sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty for you as my friend, but like... I know, but like... Shut the fuck the group, okay? <laughs> sock drawer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it turned into three seasons for me. I mean, I was the only recurring character that they asked back for all three seasons, which felt pretty cool. Um, and it was three... It was two and a half years of, like, awesome awesomeness. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with anyone? Keep up with anyone? Yeah, Very um nice. uh Lee Jun Lee uh and Lenny, um or my two uh people that I came into the show with, they're yeah. both New Yorkers, they both worked in the theater before, so like we we kinda like <laughs> had a camaraderie. <laughs> fast. And so we keep up via text um every now and again. And I'll try to shoot Priyanka a text message every now and again and sometimes she replies, but a lot of times she does it as well. She's Priyanka. I was like, you know, she's just like living the dream. <laughs> Give me my Jonas back, girl. <laughs> oh my god, I'm living for that relationship. So then what's what's next? What is I mean, you've been writing. Yeah, a bit of that. I mean, what happened. I thought Quantico was going to like last a little longer than it did, and mm -hmm. I got like my own one bedroom apartment for the first time, <laughs> and like paying lots of money for it. And so all of a sudden, Quantico gets canceled, and I was like, oh, <laughs> um, so I kind of freaked out, okay. and um, that's when I called Hal Prince, and because we had done Candide at the New York City Opera mm -hmm. um, in between shooting seasons of Quantico, and I. My friend was like, "You need to call." They were like, "Who do you know at the top of your industry?" And I was like, "Probably." how Prince, they're like, call him tomorrow, because I was like freaking out, and I didn't know what to do about money, and I didn't have a job, so I called Hal, and I asked him for advice, and that's when I found out that Raoul was opening up on Broadway, and he thought I was going to be too young for the role, but he would make a couple of phone calls, and three weeks later, I was a fan of the opera. So, that was another lesson, like, if you have someone there that champions you, don't, don't hesitate to reach out, and just ask for some advice because it might turn into your next Broadway show. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, no, my mom has always said, do not block your blessing. If somebody... Right. Is, oh, I love we that. All, I love it too because you forget, you don't want, you feel weak when you ask for help. And right. I love that you say this because there are right. so many kids like us in Texas right now who are doing musical theater who know you from show to show mm -hmm. and would never think that you would be at a place where you were like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, what is wrong? Like, but that's, that's the reality of the business we work in. We get right. to create, and sometimes we have these magical moments, but then sometimes, like, the reality of life is overwhelming. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I worked two off-Broadway shows in a row after Quantico was canceled and wound up in $25,000 worth of credit card debt because off-Broadway don't pay a living wage, first of all. No, and so that's what in this city. Six to eight months of off-Broadway work, I was like, I... I so much, uh, you know, so yes. like fifty yes. percent of the time I'm doing okay, and I'm being able. To, I can pay my bills, and I can go out with my friends, and I can kiki. But like fifty percent of the time, I'm clipping my coupons, and I'm pinching my pennies, and you know, you know yes, I mean that's a bodega. That's chopped right. cheese. <laughs> Uno, my dog eating Rachel Ray, and I'm eating chopped cheeses. I'm gonna die early because I can't afford that. <laughs> but it's real. Well, then we need to just. He's gonna get back to Broadway, so we need to go into my favorite part of the show. Um. Your moment. Um, if you woke up today and you had a platform and you had to give a positive message to your audience, what would that message be? Um, I've been thinking a lot uh, about mental health specifically lately because I've had um, a few close people to me um, going through difficult times. Um, 
a contemplating suicide, even attempting suicide, and lean into the light. There's there's so there's so much darkness out there, and it pulls at everyone. I mean, it, it, there is dark and light in everyone. Um, but if if you lean into the dark, then you'll go toward the dark. So uh, find that light. Uh, and, and if you give in to a dark thought, then that dark thought will steamroll and become an even bigger dark thought. So if you if you lean into the light, then light begets more light. I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's just what I've been trying to meditate on lately. <laughs> She's killing it. She's staying focused, and the teleprompter fell. <laughs> I was like, not the camera. Oh, first got, first got, first got, the footage. We got the footage. Jesus, can't ask her to come back. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, look, like, Jay, you gotta go through management, honey. In you know, Instagram booking, you can text um, message yes. me. Very, very sweet for you to go through my agent. To learn, yes, I, you, I want you to respect the. And I'm learning too. For me, you. it's a lot of I'm like sure. learning to schedule people and yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. How you communicate with people's agents and how certain agents say yes or no back. Sure. <laughs> yeah, my agents um, are awesome, though. They're awesome. They're great. And they're very friendly, very on it. Like, yeah. they were treated me with the respect that I, you know, I'm good. Like I'm leveling up. Deserve it. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Um, so, this is your moment. It's the very, it's the, the, the legacy question. Uh, um, when you, we lose the J.A. Johnson and your soul passes on to the next journey mm. it's supposed to go to. What do you want to be remembered by? What do you want the timbre of your voice to be? Uh, growing up, um, I didn't have much, and so uh, going into like theater and stuff, I was kind of supported by a community, um, my church community and my uh, my community theater uh, community, uh, and I was scholarship through all of my dance classes and all of my acting classes, so I didn't have to pay for anything because I had a community that believed in me, and so um, I. I try to give back to that community as much as possible because they gave so much to me. So I, I, I want to be remembered like I remember those people that championed me because it was given to me. So why not give it back? Um, so that's uh, yeah. I I want to find the next little gay boy or gay girl in Texas and usher them on uh, to a life that they love. <laughs> No, this is this is why I love tea with Lily D. Not just because like you know it's mine. Um, <laughs> you can't cut me from this. <laughs> uh, I set out just to like put a positive message out, and I am an overachiever, so I want to make it look and feel as professional and comfortable for those that I believe are a step ahead of me in the game and can help me, like help me learn and grow just sure. to be better at who I am. Yeah. And the fact that you can acknowledge that it took a village hmm. to give you your gifts. And the fact that you you could easily have taken that and done what you've done and just be over it, but the fact that you understand wholeheartedly how lucky you are hmm. to have that support and how lucky the rest of us are that you took that support and really gave work because just existing and just doing your shows, you are absolutely doing what you already said you want to do. There is absolutely little boys and girls who are gay around cities who know who you are, who respect what you do, and who want to be just like you. And he is a beautiful person inside and out. Like, I'm just, I really am proud of you. Just to, life happens so fast, and we have always been running in the same circle or in the same city, and right. just like, to know where you come from, and like, what it takes to get here from where we came from, right. it's a lot. And it is nothing you can be taught before. Like, you have to do it, and you've done it very well. I'm so. very proud of you. Thanks, too. <laughs> Y'all better get up in this. I. And that's the tea. That's the tea! I knew you had a good outro. I'm like, you guys, follow Jay on Instagram, Twitter, J underscore A underscore Johnson. I'm Willie D, talk to host. We are literally just here to spread a good message to keep the positive energy afloat like jay said lead into the light honey because we are lit up in here <laughs> all right until next time see you 3d like subscribe love all the love thank you again so much no thank you this was awesome loving you